Hey there, good morning and happy Tuesday. Thank you so much for taking the time to catch the replay of this week's messaging mini class where I am diving into the question, are you feeling bored with your message? This is something that I've actually been hearing a lot lately. You guys know I'd love to bring topics to you where I'm hearing questions or seeing people struggling out there in the market and let's tackle each of those head on um, and that's the goal of each week's messaging mini class. So this week, you guys also know I always have notes, right? I don't wanna miss anything good. If you, here's some of the things I've been hearing. So tell me if any of these sound like it's something you've been thinking about. You're worried that you're going to get bored talking about the same thing over and over again. I am a huge proponent, you guys know if you've been following me for any length of time, of showing up as a reliable expert every single time, whether it's written content or video content. And some people worry that they're gonna get bored like sharing the same thing. How, if that's you, let me know. Like if you've ever worried about that, like am I just gonna get bored about the things that I talk about? Or you worry that your ideal client is going to get bored hearing the same thing from you over and over again. If you've ever felt that way, let me know in the comments too. One of the ways that this also shows up for people is you stare at a blank page when you sit down to write content or map out or think about a topic for a Facebook Live or a video and you don't know what to write. Any of those things sound like you or what you've been struggling with? If so, today's messaging mini class is for you. Now, if you don't know me or don't know me well, my name is Carrie Price. I'm a brand messaging coach helping ambitious service-based business owners find and own the words to stand out, be heard, and make your message roar. That means having a message that is relatable, one of a kind, actionable, and reliable. So if you, if some of those bullet points that I just listed out, some of those statements I listed out sound like you, chances are there's that little um, niggling feeling in your head that you might be feeling bored with your message. Let's talk about why that's happening. And you guys know I always have a good cup of tea with me too. So you might be struggling with those things or feel like maybe you're getting bored with your message because you haven't fully developed your entire messaging framework. Maybe you have your ideal client avatar and I've talked about that. Your ideal client avatar isn't enough. It's a great first start, but maybe you've got the ideal client avatar. Maybe you even, <clears throat> oh, my voice is kind of cracking today. Maybe you even have a tagline and you feel like you've got your messaging foundation in place. Well, the problem is like that's not enough to draw from, right? What else do you have? If you had everything defined, um, you would see that like there's a never ending source of information. Hey Lillian, thank you so much for joining me live. So great to see you. So do you have defined for your business right now everything that you believe in about what you do, about who you serve, what their problems are, what they care about, how to speak to them, how you show up as an expert, how you stand out in the market. If you don't have all of that defined, it's no wonder that maybe you're feeling bored because you're working with a very small subset of information to put out there, right? And if you did have all of that stuff defined, your entire business would be shaped around that. And when you do that, like you guys, I'm going to talk about this again in a minute. You can turn anything into a valuable post or a valuable piece of content. You will never run out of things to talk about. But if you don't have that, you're probably bored and uninspired. And I'm not surprised because again, you're working with a very small piece of information to build from. Um, I shared this a couple weeks ago and I actually challenged people inside my group. Give me any topic. I can turn just about anything into a messaging related value post. It can be, you know, a lesson, something to learn about messaging. Um, books that I'm reading and TV shows I watch are endless inspiration. You guys, I am already thinking I have a whole slew of content thoughts and topics all around the upcoming Olympics. <coughs> Excuse me. 
and how like what we can learn from the Olympics for our own messaging. Um, I've written posts about my cats. One of my most in, um, popular posts is what my cat knows about messaging. Um, I've written a messaging related post about our experience buying a new car. I've got another one from um, last week. My mouse um, on my for my computer in my office like stopped working well, and I have a whole post <laughs> around how that's related to messaging. So if you had all of your messaging foundation really built, and you know how to speak about everything you believe in, everything in your life becomes an inspiration for content that you could put out there. And trust me, you'll never get bored. I have a running list of Facebook Live topics. Now, I shift that up based on like what I'm hearing people talk about, struggles that they're having week to week. But I've got the next two or three months of weekly Facebook Live content identified. Like I know what they're going to be because I never run out of things to talk about. I'm actually going to start recording shorter, like three to five minute videos and putting them on a blog and sharing those on YouTube for like tidbits of some of those. But like you're never bored sharing your message when it's well defined. Hey, Victoria, good morning. Thank you so much for joining me. Victoria says this totally speaks to me. I'm so glad it does. Um, I hear this so often. Um, now, the other thing that people worry about is are your ideal clients going to get bored and tired of listening to your same content over and over, right? So let's just assume you're over the hurdle of being bored with your own content. I am, I never get bored talking about messaging, <laughs> Maybe even to a fault. My husband, who is in the industry, he's a, a graphic designer for an agency. Like, I always have stuff I talk about, right? Like, I can turn and like we'll be talking about something, watching a TV show, and I'll go, oh, my gosh, that's a great topic for me to talk about on a Facebook Live or a post to write. Like, he gets tired. <laughs> well, he doesn't get tired of it. He's used to it now. That I can turn anything into a messaging-related value post. Okay, but... The important thing is while you may feel bored, there is a fix for that, right? Like if you build your messaging foundation, you will never again be bored and with, with what you're sharing. Um, there is a difference between being bored and being boring. And I clearly do not want you to be boring. The whole point of a well-defined, established message is to stand out in the market, be heard, and you do that when you make your message roar, right? You want people to remember you, to see you as an expert, and you need to implant in their mind. So um, being boring is never okay. <laughs> Just, it's never okay. You don't want to put content out there that, I'm going to define how I, what I think boring is. That is plain. It's not memorable. It doesn't add any value. Let me expand on that. Those are some of the bullets I had in my notes. Doesn't help you stand out. It sounds like everybody else. When people read it, they really have no idea what it is that you do. That's boring content. Your people, your followers may not stick around and be followers if you're putting out boring content. But I don't believe that you want to do that, right? I believe that when you show up with a reliable message, that's the last R and make your message roar. When you show up reliably as the expert that truly understands their ideal client, knows the pain that they're struggling with, what it is they truly want and how to get them there every single time. Every time you write a post, every time you do a video, whether that's live or recorded, every time you send an email, it better reinforce that you are the reliable expert that you want people to know, like, and trust. If you've been around in the online space, you know what that is. Some people just shorten it, call it KLT. People buy from people they know, like, and trust. If you don't show up with a reliable message every single time, they don't trust your message, right? Hey, Leanna, so good to see you. I hope you're feeling better, by the way. Um, Leanna says, that sounds like me sometimes. Yeah, you need to be okay with showing up 
every single time as the expert. Trust me, people don't get bored. Here is why. And then guys, I'm gonna to refer to my notes. I don't wanna miss anything. <clears throat> if you're speaking to your ideal client in a way that they care about, and so I talk all about this a lot, and I'm not gonna to dive too much into it today, but so many people show up and we, we talk about the things that we care about. We talk about how important it is for someone to know our thing. But you guys, people don't care about that until they know that you get them and what you're struggling with. And so that they, they let themselves select, right? Because you're not talking to everybody. If you're talking to everybody, you're talking to nobody. That, that's going to border on boring content, right? And we don't want boring. You don't want to dilute your message. You want to show up powerfully with a message that gets remembered, sticks in people's minds, right? So... If you're doing that, people are not going to be bored with that message because you speak to them in a way they care about. You're speaking directly to them. They're in their minds thinking, oh my gosh, is she in my head? Like, that's exactly what I struggle with. Yeah, I absolutely would love to have those results. How do I know more? And, and by the way, this person that I'm listening to, reading, watching, they're truly an expert at what they do because every single time, that's what they show up as. I'm going to share with you, I got a lovely message from somebody, um, I think it was on Friday, where there's a, a group I'm engaging in. I'm going to be doing a guest expert training for them this afternoon. And so I've been sharing my value posts. I have an entire series of posts that sort of introduce people to me, educate them, um, support them, give them ideas, like just really get helping them understand the value of messaging, right? And I got a lovely voice message from the uh, host of that group who just said, it is clear that you're an expert at what you do. Every single post that you share gets me thinking, gets me realizing this is important to me. I cannot wait to work with you. And you guys have only been engaging in this group at that time for like three days. So I share this a lot. Like I share that this has happened to me before, but like this just happened to me last week again. Um, the week before that, I was a guest expert in a different group and I do the same thing, right? I share that post, I engage, I encourage, I support. And in less than three days, I get people doing homework <laughs> that I give them, really thinking about their business in a different way, joining my group, following me, wanting to come and learn more. You guys can have that too. Now, I use the same set of posts <laughs> when I do that, when I join new groups and when I engage and I rerun them sometimes in my own group or here on my page every couple months. Do you think people are bored by them? No, because people actually need, if, if they're good, if your posts are good and valuable and they're structured in a way that takes, that gets people hooked, I have a framework that I um, share with my clients for how to create a Facebook post that roars. So how to really um, get people engaged in your posts. If you do that, if people see that more than once, all it's doing is it's reinforcing your position. It's getting them to think about things again. Um, have you ever read a book and you're like, oh my gosh, so many takeaways, but I need to read it again because there were so many takeaways <laughs> or you read it now and six months from now, you're like, I think I need to read that again. The exact same words that, ha so two books I'm going to share with you that, um, that's happened to me last year. I listened to, I, I love audiobooks. I listened to you are a badass by Jen Sincero. I listened to that twice last year, and it's queued up for me to listen to probably again twice again this year. If her content obviously is not boring, it's obviously valuable. She has a way that she speaks so much so that I'm going to go seek that content out multiple times. I just this morning finished listening to the book Rework. And I'm going to apologize. I don't remember both authors' name. I think it's Jeff Freed and I forget the other author's name because it's really long. 
so good that literally I was halfway in the middle of listening to the audiobook when I said, I got to go buy this on paper because I want to come back and read all these words again. I want to highlight, make notes. It, by the way, it also made me think of a whole bunch of content and posts to share about messaging. Um, but if you're putting out content that appeals to your ideal client, they will not be bored. They will not be offended <laughs> if they um, see the same post more than once. Don't post it, by the way, the same the same post five groups at the same time. Like that looks spammy in the feed. Different topic. But <laughs> when you're putting out really valuable content and you get people thinking and you're speaking to your ideal client because it doesn't have to appeal to everybody, right? People will not be bored with the content. In fact, people need seven to 10 interactions with you usually to really imprint in their brains. Even on that same post, they might see that. And I get people who comment like my, my, what my cat knows about messaging. I've shared that that's like one of my most popular posts. Every single time people see that post as I post it in different groups, like people comment on it, even though they've seen it before, they'll say like, oh my gosh, I love how you shared that story and equated it to everything about branding. And like, if your cat can do it, so can I. And they comment even if they've seen it before. So don't worry about your clients getting bored with your content as long as you're putting out powerful content that truly roars. Sarah says, that's so scary. Okay, Sarah, I'm sorry. I didn't catch when you dropped the comment. Let me know what was scary. <laughs> um, because if there's something you're scared about that I can help you with, I want to do that. Okay, because here's the other thing. Um, sort of wrapping up my thoughts on your clients not getting bored with your content. They want to remember you. They really do. They're tired of seeing that what I call the sea of sameness as you are. I'm tired of seeing posts that sound like everybody else. I don't know what you do. Like, I am not going to spend the time deciphering it. But for people who are putting out targeted content where their messaging is solid, I could eat your content up all day long. Leanna, I love seeing your Facebook lives inside my, my group, The Messaging Den, every single Wednesday. I love when I'm scrolling through my feed and I see your posts. I could eat your content up every single day. Um, Sierra Kellermeyer, who is, she happens to be my graphic designer. She happens to also been a client of mine going through my program. Her content, every single time I see it in my group, on her own page, um, in other groups where we're both members, Every single time it lands, it resonates. I see how people engage with it and I engage with it. Um, so if you're putting out great content, same post or not, people are going to eat it up. They're tired of trying to sift through the sea of sameness to find the experts out there. So show up as an expert. Let them be happy that they're like, oh my gosh, yeah, okay. Somebody who really knows what they're talking about. Let them get that excited about your stuff. Oh, okay, Sarah. Thank you so much for explaining what was scary. Sarah says it's scary to be so specific, I think. Total mindset problem for me. Now, just so you know, that is a total mindset problem for everybody. I, I promise you, you're not alone in feeling that way. What I can also tell you, though, is it's really, um, I get it. It's really hard to believe it until you're on the other side and you do it. Um, we all have resistance to things where we think like, but I need to talk to more things, I, right? I want to open up the possibility because I don't know who it is. But I don't want to turn anybody away. But here's the thing. As I get more focused for myself even on who I'm serving and the best way to serve them and who it is I'm talking to, and it lets me laser in my message and it lets me show up much more powerfully for the people that I want to attract. There are billions of people on the planet. There are probably hundreds of millions of people that have the problem that you can solve and you can't serve all of them. Even if they all decided they want to work with you, you cannot physically, literally serve them. So why not attract the people to your business that are your dreamiest clients, the ones that you will wake up 
every day loving to serve. Because let me tell you, when you attract people to your business um, and you might get that short term like excitement of like, woohoo, signed another client. And if they're not the right client for you, you're not going to give your all when you support them. You just won't. Your heart and your energy is not into it, right? But for my clients that I'm attracting into my program and they're showing up, I had a client yesterday, like she's like, like really working hard to develop her message. And I gave her like a ton of very specific feedback. And one of her comments to me was, I'm sorry, I'm so high maintenance. And I was like, honey, you are, there's, there's no such thing. You're, this is what I'm here for. But I wouldn't, I mean, I would still do it, but I wouldn't love it if I was attracting people into my business that I didn't want to love that much to help them, right? So if you think of it from the perspective of, I, I want to attract those people I'm going to love to help and get really focused on speaking with them, it starts to alleviate a little bit of the fear of all the people that I might not be helping. So don't think so much about who, like, who I'm excluding because you want to exclude them. Laser in on who it is you want to attract to your business. I promise you, you're, you'll show up so much more confidently. Your people will respond to you so much faster and you will attract the most amazing clients to your business. Um, Leanna says, that's fabulous to hear. I feel, today I feel the exact opposite. Interesting how your own views of yourself aren't always reliable. Thanks for the content idea. Absolutely, you guys. Always hardest to work on our own stuff. We are always our hardest critics. I, if you don't think that I doubt my own message, my own programs, my own everything, you're crazy. Obviously, I don't share that enough. We all doubt what we put out there. Every time I put a new piece of content out there, quite honestly, every time I jump on live every week, you guys know I'm live every single Tuesday, same time, same bat channel, right? <laughs> every Tuesday, right here on my page at 11 a.m. Eastern, I go live with a topic. Now, like I mentioned earlier, I have a whole lot of topics queued up, but every week I wonder like, are people gonna like really care about this topic? How can I make sure, one, it challenges me. Like that's why I write notes in advance and I don't, I, I always have more thoughts than I elaborate. It's a bullet point list, but it's why I always have notes because I wanna make sure that I talk about the things that I think my ideal client really cares about and what they need to hear. Sometimes it's, it's scary, right? Um, and we all doubt that like, okay, is anyone really going to care about this topic today? And you know what? Sometimes stuff doesn't stick and that's okay. Part of being a business owner is putting the stuff out there and evaluating whether it works or not. Do more of what works and do less of what doesn't. So be willing to put stuff out there. Now, in terms of experimentation, I, here's the boundaries I want to give you. Okay. If you're bowling, I want to put some bumpers in your, in the gutters for you. Okay. Here's the boundaries I want you to work within though. I still want you to clearly show up as the expert that you are. Um, so when I say like experiment with different things, don't like, Today, I think I want to be this kind of expert. Tomorrow, I think I want to be this kind of expert. There's nothing wrong with shifting in your business. Everybody does it, okay? But like, tr try and figure out what it is you really are doing, right? So that you can show up as that expert. So use that as your bumper. Um, try and get really clear about who it is that you want to attract and speak to them. Don't worry about speaking to everybody. Um, but other than that, put stuff out there and see what sticks. What do, what do people um, engage with? What do they respond to? Where, and it's not necessarily about volume of comments, right? I know Facebook algorithm, it's all about like number, engagement. But when you're getting comments from people, like nothing makes me happier than if I put out a post and there's only one comment and the person says to me, that is exactly what I needed to hear today. Or, oh my gosh, I never thought of it that way. You've given me so much to think about. Nothing makes me happier. Okay, but we all doubt. Um, yeah, Leanna, that's what you said about my content. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know you're talking about your content. You, I love your content and what you put out there. And I know you doubt. I doubt my own too. So <laughs> um, put it out there anyway. 
Hey, Justina. Um, uh, thank you so much for joining me live. She asks, what's the software you're using for this Facebook Live? I use Ecamm Live. Uh, it's only for Mac, though. Um, the one beautiful benefit of it is it's a one-time purchase, not a monthly subscription. If you're on a PC and you want to have some of the features, like being able to show comments, um, you'll need to use a third-party tool uh, like BeLive TV or OBS or Zoom webinar version, not the regular Zoom version. So, anywho. Um, okay, hey, Angeline. So good to see you. Angeline says... Um, sometimes we, what we think is going to work actually doesn't and our market may often surprise us. Yeah. So two thoughts I have on this for you, sort of both sides of the argument there. You're absolutely right. Stuff that you put out there, um, may not resonate. And that, that's not just content that could be programs and offerings, right? Your, what your service is. So, um, you want to make sure it's something that your ideal client really cares about. So I absolutely believe that. My caution for everybody, not just you, Angeline, but for everybody is when you get feedback that it's not the right thing or it doesn't work, just make sure you know where the feedback's coming from. If it's not coming from your ideal client or the person who fits the ideal client profile, eh, take it with a grain of salt. There's a lot of people out there with the very best intentions to give you feedback. And I see this all the time. Um, I'm actually engaging in a post in another group where somebody had a question and somebody tagged me and said like, hey, Carrie's the person to help you with that. And they were looking for some very specific feedback on naming uh, one of their offers. And every, like all these comments of like, hey, what about this name, that name, this name, that name, right? Like all these comments. My post was like, all right, I got questions for you. <laughs> and I asked these questions and she's engaging with me and not all these, like she asked for a name. And I was like, mm, I, like all these ideas don't matter if we don't understand the context, right? So when you get feedback, just look at where you're getting the feedback from. Um, even inside my own programs with my clients, when my clients ask for feedback on something, I'm like, all right, you got to give me the background in your message. I got to know these things before I can give you feedback. Otherwise, I'm just like making it up, right? Your message is strategic. It's a strategic guide for your business. So in order for me to give you feedback on whether something's in alignment with that, I've got to know more about your message, right? And if you don't have those answers, I can't give you feedback. This is why I never give people feedback on a tagline. I get asked all the time. So Carrie, what do you think about this tagline? I have zero opinion. It's not good. It's not bad. I have zero opinion because I don't know what it's based on. So just watch what, you know, where you're getting the feedback from. <laughs> uh, Lucia says, um, gr it's such a great point. Evaluate who gives the feedback. Yeah. Um, just like I don't, my sister, super successful professional woman, not an entrepreneur, not my ideal client. I don't review stuff with her, right? Like her feedback, she's going to want to be supportive. She's going to say, oh my gosh, Carrie, that's great. But great to who? Great to do what? Like what's its purpose, right? So just definitely be watching where you ask for and where you get your feedback. Um, Angeline says, oh my gosh, that is so true. One of my students was getting advice from not her target market. Excellent point. Yeah. Yeah. We just have to be really conscious of that. Watch where you're getting the feedback from, evaluate the results. Um, you not group think like, I don't want you to have group think, but more results from people who are in your target market is better. Um, if you have a super dreamy client that you've worked with though, and you can get one-on-one -on -one time with them, one of my clients blessed me with an hour of her time. Um, she went through my program, got amazing results. She is a super fan, blessed me with an hour of her time to give me very specific feedback. This lesson, what worked, what didn't, here's where I struggled. Um, I wish you would have dove, you know, deeper into this, or sometimes I'll run content by her because she is my dreamiest client. And she'll say, Carrie, that doesn't sound like you. Like, so if you've got a single person that you can use as a sounding board, the trick is, or the key is to make sure that they are the right person to be giving you that advice. All right. So if you are still feeling like, okay, I hear you all. That's great. And I don't want to be bored with my message. I want to be inspired to talk about anything, right? Anything. Um, 
never run out of content ideas in a way that's going to speak to my ideal client because you're tired of being bored. I never want you to be boring. Bored or not, <laughs> never be boring. But if you're tired of being bored or you're worried that you are um, maybe bordering on a boring, um, that is what my premium program helps you do. It helps you build the entire messaging foundation that solves all of these problems. Um, so if you're interested in learning more about that, go sign up for the waiting list. The program's not open right now for enrollment, um, but just go to carryprice.com slash waitlist. I think I have a little thing. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm in the way. carryprice.com slash waitlist. Um, to learn more about the program when it opens up. And I will also be having a free masterclass training that's gonna break down what those elements are that I cover and help you develop inside your program, my program, <laughs> um, inside my program, um, and then tells you more about the program. So if you get on the wait list, I'll let you know when that next masterclass is available. Okay, in the meantime, come get some support from other ambitious, business owners who are focused on wanting to make sure that they make their message roar. Join me inside my free Facebook group, The Messaging Den. You can search for that right here on Facebook or go to themessagingden.com. Um, come in there, get comfortable sharing your message. You can do Facebook Lives in there to practice, get some feedback, get some support. Um, ask your questions, share your struggles. We're all in this together because I don't want you to be bored. I definitely don't want you to be boring. I want you to stand out, be heard, and make your message roar. I look forward to seeing you in my group and I will be back here next week, every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern. Um, and I'm, I, honestly, I'm debating between two topics. It's the, it's going to be the Olympics will have been starting, but it's also Valentine's Day. And I have topics related to both related to messaging. So you know what? Come inside my Facebook group. I'll put up a poll and you guys can tell me which one you want to be the subject of next week's talk. All right. I will see you there. And until then, have a wonderful week. Talk to you soon. Bye.